Hi guys, are you like me? Do you want the best image quality possible, yet you're super, super lazy? Well, you've come to the right place. I'm gonna show you how to make your Sony footage look just pretty much perfect with one or two clicks of your mouse. With the help of uh, Leaming Lut, you'll see it costs a little bit of money, but stick with me, stay with me. Here we go. Like I said in the intro, for my very easy workflow, I do use a paid LUT. It's from Paul Leeming, the Leeming LUT, and uh, I don't know him. I'm not sponsored by him. Nobody sponsors me, not even uh, those Squarespace people. So you know I'm a nobody when that's the case. And I will do some videos about grading your footage for free from scratch, but that is honestly, that is way too much work when you can pay, I think it's 30 pounds, because he's British. 30 pounds! That was a good British accent. I offended everyone across the pond, didn't I? 30 pounds, I don't know what that is in US or Canadian dollars off the top of my head, but whatever it is, it's worth it. You know, 40, 50 bucks. You can buy one lot at a time, but they are 20 pounds. So I would suggest getting the combo pack for your specific camera. Like for me, it's the Sony A series. So whatever A camera you have, you can use these Leeming LUTs on, even the new fancy A7S III. Now, I'm currently using the Sony A7 III. That's what you're looking at right now. And this has been notoriously bad for colors. People have had a really tough time color grading this thing. And also, it is only 8-bit. So you can't use the S-logs or any of that, or your image will start falling apart when you go to grade it. So the color in the camera naturally is not very good and the, uh, you can't use the, the logs, what do you do? You do the HLG. That will give you uh, the best dynamic range, the best picture profile that you should use on this 8-bit camera. So if you're like me and you got a Sony a7 III or any of the Sony A cameras that are not the Sony a7S III because that one has 10-bit, so you can do more stuff with that. You use the HLG picture profile. I tell you what, when you go download the Paul Leeming LUT, which again, he's not paying me for, if you download the Paul Leeming LUT, he will have an instructional, uh, I almost said booklet, email, an instructional PDF that will tell you exactly what to do with your camera, exactly how to set it up, and exactly how to use it, which is fantastic. And then with the click of a mouse, you're finished. Now this is a corrective LUT, so what it will do is give you a technically accurate picture. So all the colors will be correct, your exposure will be correct, and then you are free to color grade the crap out of it if you want, because you're starting at a very good point. Now I really don't do much color grading after the fact because sometimes I warm it up a little bit and, uh, and that's not because of the LUT, it's because I'm, I'm pasty white. I look like uh, if a vampire has been dead for a thousand years, that is my skin tone. So I like to pretend I have a tan, so sometimes I warm it up in post, you know, to look like a real person. So the first thing you want to do is manually white balance. I have one of these uh, X-Rite color checkers here. That's very good for that. But you can also uh, use one of those cheaper gray cards. Let me see. I have one here somewhere. Something like that. You just manually white balance. That is one of the keys to making this work. So what you want to do is expose to the right. Make your image as bright as you can until you start seeing the zebras. You can do 100 plus with your zebras. But I actually base mine on the skin tones because for YouTube, you're all just staring at my ugly face. So what I like to do is uh, set the zebras at, it's supposedly around 87. So with my Ninja 5 that I'm using, it doesn't have 87, it has 85 or 90. So I go to 90 and then I just, uh, let's see here. Oh, it's gonna be difficult because the camera is in the way. Okay, hold on. Let me angle this over here and focus. Okay, so what I like to do is just turn up my light until I can see those zebras. You see these zebras? Right there on my face, eh? and on my neck. So now I'll just turn it down until those zebras disappear. And that should be good. So that's it, that's all I do. I just white balance it, and then I set my zebras for about 90, and then I back it off a little bit, bring it into post, press the button, and then voila, we're done. And then if you feel like it, you know, you can do all kinds of cinema grades. It could be, you know, epic, as the kids like to say. 
I'm about to do something super dangerous here. I am about to compare my HLG3 graded footage to the Sony A7 III standard picture profile coming straight out of the box. Why is that dangerous? Well, let me tell you. It's a scientific phenomena where basically if you have a contrasty image up next to a not so contrasty image, people will almost always pick the brighter, more contrasty image, even if it is the worst image. Now, here's the kicker. If you show those images back to back instead of side by side, people will almost exclusively pick, exclusively? Exclusively pick the graded, the nicely graded color image. So bear that in mind when you're looking at it. Don't let the contrast fool you. Think about when you're watching movies. If you see Clooney up there, you know, he's, it, it just looks smooth. The highlights look good. The skin tone looks good. You know, it's, it's blended. It's, it's not so video camera like. Do you know what I mean? Like you don't want it to look like you're shooting it on your iPhone or or it comes from a video camera. Have I explained this enough? Okay. So first I'll put up the images back to back and then I'll put them up side by side. So this is the standard picture profile coming straight out of the Sony A7 III. No color correction done. And uh, look at it. You know, it looks like I rubbed Cheetos all over this part of my face. And then I got some white makeup and I put it down there. Why? Why would you do this to me, Sony? Look at me. I'm hideous. Now you see how over there he has harsh shadows. His skin is all kinds of different colors. You know, it's just the highlights look terrible. They're all blown out. You can see his pores. You know, the top part of his face is a different color than the bottom part of his face. This is not the image that, that you want. You want something like this, huh? Where everything is smooth. I'm not saying you can't prefer that image and that it makes you stupid, but you know, science is science. One of the things you are gonna have to remember is that uh, since you're exposing to the right, you're gonna need a little more light. My Godox UL150, it was on about 17, 18% for the standard picture profile, and now it is on about 33%. It's a fairly powerful light, so uh, that, you know, that's almost, it's, it's double. That is double, almost. And so remember, it's not just the Sony, it's also Panasonic and Fuji, and pretty much all the camera companies are mentioned there on uh, Paul Leeming's website. But at uh, Canon, I don't think there's a lot. The EOS system, I think you can use. But again, where he uses zebras to uh, check his exposure, I don't know how it works for the Canon people. So if you're a Canon shooter, make sure you read through the PDF to see if you can actually do it because maybe you need an external monitor. I, I don't know exactly. But I do know with my Panasonic cameras and my Sony cameras, it is fantastic. I'm gonna do another one of these, I think, for my Panasonic camera. And I could do it in this video, but we're talking to very separate groups here. People, some people have Sony, some people have the Panasonic. So thanks for watching. Make sure you comment down below. Tell me what you liked better because maybe you like the standard profile better. Maybe you're certifiably insane. I don't know. But uh, just make sure you leave a like and uh, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.